Hey guys, welcome to my kingdom. All 300 acres. And I'm gonna be talking a little bit about my story and starting to farm here and the farm we used to have and getting out of farming, getting back into it, what it all meant, how it went. Let's get into it. So to start things off, we are gonna do the good old hot toss. Whoa, where did it go? Well, there it is. I thought that would be more dramatic for some reason. Hey guys, what is up? I'm Ben Lichty, welcome to the channel. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about what I do for a living, which is farming, how I got here, because believe it or not, I wasn't doing farming my whole life, who I am, and I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a tour of some of our barns here. Looks like I'm talking a little weird right now. I just got back from the dentist, so my lips like, has no feeling here. It's coming back, but that would be why I might look a little weird the way I'm talking. So I was born and raised on a dairy farm about an hour and a half south of where we farm now. When I was about 11, we built a new um, dairy barn, a tie stall, a uh, hundred could tie up on our cows. While it was nice, it, it, it created a lot of other problems. Um, a, the barn went way over budget due to some unexpected cost and B, it brought in some, a ton of stray voltage, which back then wasn't as known about. So it took us a long time to even sort of start to get a handle on that. And we had cows dropping like flies and obviously that's not good for a farm. You go out in at night, come out, and when you go in, all the cows look healthy. You come out, there's a cow laying dead in its stall. Obviously that gets pretty depressing after a while. So then when I was 14, um, we were forced to sell the dairy farm. I wouldn't say it was all due to money issues at all, but that's kind of the path dad decided to go. So dad and I got into um, custom relief milking for a while, um, a few years. Jake had a different job working on solar panels and windmills. And then when I wasn't busy doing relief milking, I went did some uh, mason masonry. Masonry, is that the word? Masonry work. Then I actually worked for a few months on solar panels for the same company Jake did as well. We lived in a small village at the time and um, Dad did end up buying 100 acres of just land, Stratford Way I guess, and um, Stratford, Ontario. We had that for, I don't know how long we had that for and uh, I still remember like it was yesterday, Jake and I were out chopping wood one day, or splitting wood, and we got to talk and we're like, wouldn't it be nice to be able to work together like this every day? Like, it would just feel like it's not a job. <laughs> and we agreed and we told them, and you know what, we wanna buy a farm. We wanna buy a dairy farm, we wanna start farming together again. And he was uh, like, say no more. <laughs> and we found this farm, we seen it in the winter for sale, we had no idea what the land was like or anything. It was a bit of a flying by, and and in hindsight, it could have been bad, but it turned out to be a really, really good thing. So we're on the third cut with most of our grass, but there are some farms we rent that um, we just take two cuts off of. This field here is one of them. Um, it's a little bumpy and it's rented just grass. So we take this off for dry cows um, just twice a year, let it get fairly mature. And then we have another farm over there, has a bunch of small fields. We do the same. The forecast is pretty nice, so we figured let's cut some grass. So anyway, then we moved up to the farm where we're farming now, and uh, we bought it with 60 kgs of quota, and a little under 200 acres of workable land, maybe 180 or so. We rented to so their three owners, kind of, um, of the farm we bought, uh, three brothers. So we rented the 100 acres that one of the brothers owned, so that made it 300 acres we farmed. And that farm that we rented is now the farm that I own. We bought that uh, a few years later then. And so um, now together we own um, probably 280, 270 maybe of workable land. 
just starting like probably the past four years or five years I guess maybe we started looking for land to rent slowly but surely we built that up I should actually back up a bit so when we first moved up my dream was to do custom work I want to get big into custom work there's um, a lot of Mennonites around our area that aren't allowed to have tractors and stuff I want to get big into custom work and, and uh, that was my dream so I worked hard on that and we built the customer base up fairly good and uh, we still do a fair bit of custom work. But then as I started doing custom work, um, I realized how much nicer it was to be able to do your own. So I started trying to rent more land and build our own land base up, and which we're slowly still doing. And we've not done as much custom work. Well, the grass is a little thicker here. Um, over there was a little bit disappointing. Uh, not sure why it's thicker here, but we're gonna have to bring some manure over and uh, this land needs some extra something. Okay, that is one field done. We got a little ways to go here. We'll probably be cutting fairly late tonight. Um, jumping out to check, see how good of a job it's doing cutting. So Emily brought me some def out. I was running low and I forgot to fill fill up before I came. Or I should say I thought I had I had enough and it was running lower than I thought. You're in my way! Move! Well, I have no choice. I gotta pull some whistling diesel stunt here. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So this field here we cut a little bit later and honestly it's coming along very nicely. I'm tempted to cut it. There's not a whole lot here. Do we wait a bit or do we cut it? Um, maybe we'll wait a bit. Yep, so we decided to wait to cut that field till later. We got a bunch of small fields back there to cut. So this is our main dairy barn here. We are old school. We're Thai style in an old bank barn. This piece here was built in the 70s, I believe. And uh, that's when they also remodeled. I'll show you inside the barn. So we put a bigger bulk tank in here. Um, I think that was like six years ago, maybe. Maybe less, I lose track of time. We are now in Jake's Fortress. Please remove your shoes. I'm joking. It's a barn. Jake really enjoys cattle genetics and stuff, and he's really built this herd up. Um, um, he's got himself a pretty nice herd here, and we, when we bought it, we had a pretty nice herd to work with from the start, and he's built it even further from that. So this is the new piece here, as you can see, and then this is the old piece. Well, we, now when we bought this farm, there was 60 tie stalls, so these stalls were not here, and these stalls were not here. There was pens here, and there was a wall uh, about here maybe. And that would have been out in the pole barn. So we just redid this not long ago, made dry cow pens here, and stalls here, and we put stalls here. So now we can tie up and milk 91 cows. Now we'll make our way upstairs in the bank barn here. It will probably be a little bit dark. I got it pretty full of straw right now. So there's not much space. Um, so we, Jake will throw some straw down a hole in the barn there to bed up the cows, uh, some of the cows. And yeah, just, just a normal bank barn. As far as that goes, we got um, this boxed in. We got um, fans at the end of the barn, right here. And the air will come, get drawn up, and out. 
That's our coverall there. We will be filling that with straw. Usually when uh, it gets empty with straw, we get a bunch of junk in there, so we gotta clean it out as we fill it up with straw. And then up there is our heifer barn. And we'll go up there and I'll show you around. Dad's just finishing up hauling manure right now. So most of the pile's gone. We're hauling it to a farm we're renting. So we built this barn in 2021 and this was exclusively for our heifers. And we have a lot of heifers. Before we had this heifer barn, we had a lot of these heifers at my barn, which I'll show you later on in this video. Um, but we got this barn pretty full. Heifers are doing extremely well. So our nutritionists, when they first heard we're building the heifer barn, it's not the nutritionists we're currently with. They started getting all excited and thinking of all this uh, special feeds we could feed them. And we we're like, no, we're not planning on doing that. Um, Jake gives them mineral, obviously. We give them blocks of salt. And then we just shove the bales to them. That's all they get. Haleage, baleage, peas and oats. Um, we made some uh, wheat for green feed this year. That's all they get. No corn silage, no nothing. And look at the uh, shape of these heifers. They're absolutely in incredible shape. And I think the preg rate's pretty good. I'd have to ask Jake for sure, which is I know is important. But uh, you can see they're shiny coats. They're very healthy animals. So basically when it comes to heifers, we uh, do our own thing a little bit. But Jake's doing a very good job of they're looking extremely well. So then we always try to plan ahead. So we built an extra 50 feet on the end of the heifer barn. We built all the doors exactly the same as the far end. And if we ever want to add on to the heifer barn and we um, outgrow this facility, we can just extend it here and we got the roof here. In the meantime, this is where we store as much equipment as we can in the winter as well as a driving shed at my place, which I will show you later in this video as well. So we, I just have some fans going here right now, um, some spring wheat, and I just want to check the moisture on it because we sh Dad wants to take it in tomorrow to get cleaned and treated because we're going to use it for seed next spring. But it was a little damp, so I'm just going to check the moisture on this stuff while I'm up here. We got some fans sticking into it. Okay, that should be enough to sample. I don't claim to be an expert by any means. I should just make that a disclaimer. But um, as far as the heifers, what I was saying about the nutritionists and stuff, you just got to be careful because whenever you um, build a building like this, there are a lot of people that look at all the money that they can try to make off of you. And if you listen to every single person out there and every sing use every single product that they're trying to sell, you are going to go broke and they might all be good products, but some, you just got to figure out what's best for your farm. So for our feed, for the corn silage, we do egg bags and we have one 20 by 80 silo. We used to have two, but the one was a block silo. And shortly after we bought this farm and moved up here, we had to knock it down because it was starting to fall apart. That was a bit of a scary ordeal being so close to the barn and stuff, but all worked out well. The grain bins were here when we moved here and we used them to store dry corn. Then we built this manure pit when we built the heifer barn. It holds 1.3 million gallons. As long as I'm showing buildings that were hard worked on, this here is my nephew Kobe's creation. Pretty impressive. I think he's like eight or nine years old. And uh, we have a bunch of skids around we're not using and he made himself a workshop with a second floor. And I think he's got a Canada flag up there. Excuse the mess, we have a little bit of cleaning up to do here. And then literally a stone throw away is our place. So we're just down there past the side road and then we live here. And this is where our shop is as well as another bank barn. Okay, it's getting a little bit on the dark side tonight, but later in this video, I'll show you our shed, talk about that and our shop inside and we won't worry about outside <laughs> we got to clean this up and spray it it's funny how junk just accumulates you got to stay on top of it good morning everybody it is a beautiful morning the good lord has given us again this morning so i'm off to cut hay again this morning um we're gonna start with dry hay and later on we're gonna work to some baleage we're gonna be making for the milk cows 
We're cutting for the milk cows. So I'll quick show you upstairs in the barn here first. There's really nothing to see. It's full of straw. There's a bike. So we got it right packed full of straw. So <laughs> that's about all there is to see. And there are steps going from downstairs to the barn to upstairs, but they're kind of blocked off with all the straw. So we'll just go around this way. Um, I got to cut that. I... <laughs> I planted some grass seed there, smoothed it out, but we're gonna cut the weeds before they go to seed here. Well, here the calves are. So we have this big yard here, and then we redid the bottom of this barn here, so we can drive in and clean them out here. And on the other side of the feed manger, we have the feed manger in the middle. And then we have where they can lay down at the back here, and lay down at the back over there. So it's a very simple. They come from our calf barn to this barn. I guess they're a little scared. And uh, they do quite well here. And then we have this little shed here, which um, is where some of our smaller stuff gets thrown in. Our wrapper. We have um, the header for our corn chopper, the pickup head, our floor. We keep net wrapping plastic when we stock up, which our supply is getting low, and then in the winter, I'll actually keep our flex head for a combine on this side and put the wrapper on that side. So here's our shop. Excuse the mess. It's worse. It looks worse than it is. We'll say. <laughs> About 40 by 40. Um, this whole building with the shed is 40 by... Um, was it 90? I forget exactly. Uh, or 100. But uh, this is where we do all of our work. And in the summer when we're busy, it does tend to get like this. I got to clean it up. We uh, put this wall in a few years ago. Heated and uh, insulated it. And threw the furnace in. And it has been nice. It's been really nice. It's pretty small. But it's... Uh, you can definitely... Do a bit of work in there. Just a pole barn structure, so nothing fancy, but you, you take what you're given, so. Okay, time to go cut. But first, we have to get our morning calories. Okay, so Dad just came with the pickup truck. We're gonna take a drive down to look at some grass. See if it's long enough to cut that's further away here. Good morning, Gar. Good morning, Dad. Okay, we're back at it. I forgot to video down there, but we walked in the grass a bit, and I think we're gonna cut. Um, there's two fields down there we're gonna cut. And uh, it's really fine alfalfa, so should make really nice hay for the calves. Well, we're cutting on the home farm now. This is probably one of our hilliest fields here, but um, crop's not actually too bad. Third cut. Okay, I got these wagons all ready to go for Mark, so he's going to go get some straw, I think, later on. Dad's still hauling solid manure now, which was the tractor I'm going to use for spreading some oats on. So we like to spread oats on any ground that we're going to be planting corn the next year, so I'm going to do that, but Dad's still hauling solid manure, and he's using the tractor that I would use to do that. And here is our calf barn. We'll step inside here first. So originally when we moved here, our calf barn was from here to there. This was an add-on. So we'll look at the old part first. Um, we had to rip the roof off. So we put uh, new trusses on that went out and we made the lean-to. All the wiring in here was done by yours truly, which I'm pretty proud of. So just uh, this. So some smaller pens over here. A little bit bigger pens over here, which got to get cleaned out. And they can all swing and can come in from the end and clean out with the skid steer so pretty straightforward um at the end here is where we keep our straw for bedding hay for feeding and uh chop and other things so um looks like we got to clean it again soon but so we have this end covered and then we have that all open all of our hutches are in here. Believe it or not, sometimes all this is full. Um, if a calf is somewhat sick, throw it in a hutch. It is amazing 
Anyone that farms in Noah Hutches, I don't know what it is. Generally, your calves stay extremely healthy in Hutches for the most part. So, it's a very nice here. Keeps the weather off, but yet it's outside. So, that's our calf barn in a nutshell. Hello. And then the nice part is you can wash these calf hutches up. Every time the calf goes out, they'll wash the inside. Hey, how you liking it in there? Hello. Oh yeah, they look happy. They look happy. So guys, thank you so much for watching. That'll conclude this video. I'm not even gonna ask you to subscribe today. You don't have to. You may. You don't have to. Anyway, we'll see you in the next one. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment and share it to your friends. Bye for now.